Well, hello, hello, hello. Um, hello to uh, the stream. And uh, what are we today? The 26th, 25th? Let's see. We are the 26th of March. So last uh, session for March, I'm going to do two in April. And uh, we'll let you know what the dates are soon. And uh, I just wanted to mention that if you are uh, watching this, to make sure uh, to uh, like the video if it's something that you enjoyed and if it's useful to you. And also, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, also, leave a comment uh, in, uh, in, in the comment section as to um, how um, you're liking this. And of course, if you have questions, you can ask during the, um, during the stream but also, if you have questions after that, you um, can ask um, in the comments. And uh, sometimes the Pixelogic folks look through there and uh, they can answer your questions for you. All right, so let's do a quick sound check before we get going here. Um, is um, everybody hearing me okay? So we're uh, broadcasting this on three different channels, on YouTube, on... Um, on Twitch and also on Facebook. So if somebody from each uh, one of these um, services can uh, respond, that would be great. Looks like we've got one person on Facebook. Hello, uh, Lansk. I think you're a return uh, person, uh, so welcome back. And let's see, anybody, um, anybody else on there? Anybody on YouTube uh, can chime in. I see quite a few people on here, so uh, let's, uh, let's see here. All right. Well, okay. Looks like um, YouTube. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Okay. Mike is tuned in, but he is not, uh, maybe there's a bit of a delay. So if you guys can hear me okay, just chime in. I'm showing uh, good on my end, and I uh, just want to make sure everybody can hear me okay, uh, and see the video okay, and then we can get going. All right, so louder please for YouTube. All right, I don't know if I can make this any, let's see here, I think I'm at the max. Of audio, I'll just bring the Microsoft microphone um, closer. That might help. Is this any better? Uh, and then, okay, so okay, so YouTubers four times uh, louder, uh, cool. Okay, so that's better. Uh, my phone sounds perfect on YouTube. Okay, good. So YouTube sound is good. Uh, Facebook, anybody? Uh, there's a couple of people here that are saying hello from Facebook. So if you guys can. Um, let me know if you can hear me okay, and then we don't have anybody from Twitch chiming in yet, so uh, if anybody on Twitch can hear me, uh, let us know and we can get going. So we're going to continue working on our mech uh, that we started, uh, I think this is episode 5, so it's been a while since we were working on this, and uh, we're probably going to go till 10 uh, episodes on this guy, but maybe less, I don't know, depends. Um, I'll bring up the mech itself. We were working on the gun last time. I did some extra work while we were not on. Excuse me. And I've got some fun things to talk about today regarding this thing, and hopefully we can get it to a further uh, state. Okay. Uh, I still am not getting anybody from uh, Twitch. If somebody from Twitch can chime in, that would be awesome. And uh, so this is the, um, the cannon uh, that we're working on. This is uh, what's going to be on uh, its arms, uh, this mech's arms. And um, let me see, I don't think I need these pieces anymore. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Oh, there's the expose function. Come on back. Wait a minute. Okay, so I'm still anybody, nobody on Twitch today, or you can't hear me. I guess this is kind of an explosion of the parts. Let's put them all back together. All 
right, there's our Mac. And uh, what we want to do here is, I think I just wanted to zero in on this part right here. And I might not need this part anymore. I'm just going to delete it for now. All right, so still nobody from Twitch, amazing. All right, so I guess there's nobody on Twitch watching or they can't hear me, which I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> All right, so um, the next thing is I kind of have a little bit of a, a juxtaposition of the gun, so I kind of placed them uh, over here. This is kind of an older version. And also I'm working on a feed shoot, which I will uh, show you guys today. Um, and this is something that I'm going to be making available soon on my gum road, but basically, um, it is this thing right here. Let me just kind of put in the placeholders for it. And I also made a kind of a thing for it here. Let's not show that first. So we have a kind of, you know, these things in the back of the mech are the drums where the bullets are kept. Uh, and uh, I should say the shells, the cannon shells. These are both cannons right here. And so uh, the cannons need to travel from the, ten uh, the, uh, uh, the kind of the drill, uh, drum in the back to the gun itself. And so I have the bullet feed IMM brush that I'm making, uh, which is this right here. So there they are. So now I've got the bullets kind of coming in from inside the drum into here. And then I was kind of thinking, you know, if this was the mech, the, this is kind of exposed. So maybe there's some sort of a, a fabric covering for it. And I did this for it right here. And if I render it, you can see it better. Um, I use the um, micro mesh capability and also some of the cloth sculpting capability to kind of get this to be there. So uh, we'll wait for this to render. Um, all right, so twi Twitch, okay, good. Uh, all right, Poca Cola, uh, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? And Alexander, one of you too on Twitch. If you can let me know uh, that you can hear me okay, then then that's great. Then we can kind of, uh, we're fully um, on board and ready to go. So yeah, this thing over here, which basically would be some sort of a covering for it, and I haven't really decided. It's probably, it probably will be some sort of rubbery thing. Uh, I guess I can just take the micro mesh off so you guys can see it better. All uh, right, it's under dynamic, subdiv, uh, to be on the tool itself. right here and let me turn off micro poly so you can kind of see I've got this um, enveloping thing that goes around and protects the the bullets and, um, and I think I still have it on uh, transparent so I'm just gonna render it again so you guys can see it inside of here okay uh, yeah you can hear me that's great all right so fantastic I've got uh, let's see I'm confused with what kind of uh, technique I should okay you want to do a transformer somebody says um, Lansk uh, maybe defining shapes, divisions, panels with brushes, or maybe starting adding primitive meshes, etc. Yeah, um, actually, I think Paul Gabry has a thing where he does a transformer. You can watch that. So uh, what I'm talking about here is this. So if you go to um, the Pixelogic YouTube channel or ZBrush Live, whichever one you want. So here, if we go to videos, I think um, this is me live over here. But if you scroll down in this list, I think Paul Gabry, who works for Pixelogic, I think he's doing something else now, but he was working on a transformer not too long ago. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. I wonder if you can uh, just go by him, but I'm sure we'll stumble onto it. It wasn't that long ago. Um, yeah, let's do this. Nope, that's not it. Let's see. Maybe we can just do a search by him. Maybe he's got a playlist. Let's look at that. Playlists. And uh, where are you, Paul? He must have a playlist. All right, well, just look for, I just do a search, I guess. I don't know why we didn't do that in the first place. Do a search for Paul. I think there's just one Paul, and here he is. And if you scroll down here, um, he's got, there it is, Transformer right here that he's doing. Uh, it's a Gundam actually, but I think he did a Transformer too at some point. But anyway, just look for Paul Gabry and look for his uh, streams. And I think somewhere in here, he's got a Transformer that he does and maybe you can get the idea there. 
Um, what I would do is block it out first, just start out with simple uh, cubes and then uh, and then just kind of go in further and further and further. Um, yeah, and the search bar in the channel, that's right. Thanks, Coca Cola, for, for that. So, okay, so anyway, this thing is, I guess, let me turn it transparent again so you can kind of see uh, what's going on. Um, transparency in ZBrush is available if you go to um, um, if you go to the um, display properties of the uh, of the object. So you choose the tool and then go to display pro display properties and turn on BPR transparency shading. Let's make sure it's also on in the renderer. Another place you need to check here is this. So the strength is pretty low. I think that's why it's not showing up. So I'm going to change that to 0.5 and re-render this so you can kind of see this kind of uh, shoot cover uh, in a transparent manner and then you can see the bullets inside so I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this or if this is the cover I'm going to leave but I definitely want the bullets to be traveling from uh, the drum in the back to the gun right so I think I've got my settings are cranked up here so it's gonna okay here we go no still not coming up transparent here we go BPR transparent shading visibility 100% shadows are at 1% what's going on here let me pump this up even further. Am I on the right tool? That would make a huge difference. Yep, I am. All right, one more, one more try here. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, if you're gonna do a, a, a transformer or a Gundam or something like that, just uh, first thing to do, of course, is gather your reference and do some observation and uh, see if it's. Uh, I don't know why this thing's not showing transparently. I don't know. Uh, all this stuff is good. Um, let's see. There's one other place where it could be. Uh, yep. Transparent. No, this is on. Let's try. It's on again. It's on here. Right. BPR visibility. Let's say. Let's change this to 50. Uh, let's see if that does it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, what you do is you kind of look at your reference and then break it down by different pieces. So, you know, the head, the neck, the, the torso, the, the chest, uh, arms, and then just divide it up into blocks. Just put uh, cubes there. Or you can start like I started. You can just start with Z spheres and use a cube as the link in between. And then you can, uh, all right. So I don't know what the deal is, but this does not want to work right now. Maybe um, I'm going to change this back to 100 and go back to the transparency here and make sure okay strength of one um okay i think everything is right I, I don't know why it's not showing up anyway um so yeah um the, the thing to do is um go ahead and hide this thing right and so you can kind of see uh this kind of effect here which is kind of a cool thing and i might have a different one i'm going to definitely have a couple other guns on this thing all right so and i did some other uh, modifications here as well so let's hide all this to the mech of course i put these drums there they're kind of in the earlier stages but i also did this hatch in the back and uh, i'll be doing something similar to this uh, on the mech itself today so you can kind of get an idea of how i did it and then um, I also added these panels, which basically, you know, I took this kind of uh, hip piece over here and made another copy of it and uh, um, put that over here. So I took this hip piece, made a copy of it over here, and then put another copy up here. And uh, just kind of giving it some secondary shapes here. Our primary shapes are working really well. Uh, I also uh, added this little bit of a hatch up here, which I'm going to work on some more uh, today and uh and worked on the gun some more uh, i'll kind of zoom in on the gun so let's hide the mech and of course i uh, organize my scene it's always good to do that um, always have your scene organized so you can hide big parts so there's that hatch i was talking about so there it is right and i figured out some really cool ways of doing this with the uh, dynamics simulation these um kind of pillowy parts around the edge so people when they are climbing in and out they don't uh, bump themselves onto kind of sharp angled metals, uh, sharp angled metal, uh, right? So, and then there are, these are the pilots on the mech. This is the guy standing on top of the mech. And this is the guy on the ground. So you can see this cannon is pretty big, right? So this thing is, you know, it aims to uh, definitely punch some holes into things. All right, so let's hide the people too. And uh, let's uh, look at this. What's left up here? Oh, the hatch, we don't see that either. So let me hide that. 
so now um, let me concentrate on a couple of things here. I'm trying to decide, and this is where I left it last time I was working on this, is that this grill over here, right? So the grill over here on top is basically um, a Boolean object. So if I turn live Boolean off, you can see that I've got uh, one of these kind of pieces, which I generated using uh, the, um, uh, the uh, spotlight. So in spotlight in this one, which is one that I, um, and let's bring, make these smaller so everybody can see them. So I chose, I think it's this one right here to generate this outer part. And then I use the same one to generate the inner part and it's subtractive. So if we look at this over here in my uh, list of items, and let me just kind of bring this down to maybe about 10 just since we've got lower resolution here. So if you look at this, it's uh, kind of at the end, I think, yep. So at the end, I start with this piece right here and then subtract this from it. So it's a subtract. And then I also subtract these side ones, which are also done with the um, with the um, the spotlight uh, uh, 3D, uh, make 3D option. So if I look at it right now, this is kind of the, what I'm getting. And it looks pretty good, but I might want to try a couple of other options. So I like this a lot. Uh, I might keep this one, but why not make an, a few more? So I'm just going to go to this tool, which basically has the uh, depth that I need, which basically is this depth right here. And let's position the gun this way. And let's see if we can choose some more. Um, was the cover created with Dynamics? Yes, it was, right? So um, basically what I did was, and that's a good question. Let me kind of uh, go back to that real quick. So here is the um, uh, gun center. Let's see, where is that? Is it underneath? So if I look at the bullet feed over here, right, and I turn this on, you can see here that, um, so basically, um, maybe I'll go through and show how I did this today. Uh, maybe I'll choose a different bullet uh, feed because I've got a bunch of these in the in the kit that I'm going to be putting on Gumroad, so I can show how to do this. But basically, after I did that, I uh, connected the two up using the bridge function. So let me see if this has the undos. Uh, I don't think it'll have the undos for today, will it? Let's see. Let me start going back in time. Yeah, good. All right. So basically, the first thing I did, and I love this about ZBrush that I can do this, right? Uh, and luckily, I saved the undos, so they're here in the stack. So basically, what I did was I created um, those two ends that I have. I bridged them using the ZModeler bridge function. So it created this kind of uh, thing right here. Uh, let me put... Um, polyframe on so you can see, right? So I basically created a bridge between this piece and this piece. And that's basically going to uh, ZModeler and using this bridge function and also using two holes. And then you can choose kind of what your um, um, kind of middle part's gonna be like and you can choose different options here. So basically I created this piece first, right? And then after I got done with that piece, uh, tweaked it a little bit, just a little bit, not much like that. And then uh, subdivided it a few times. So I basically have some geometry, right? And made it a little bit bigger. And then I basically just use dynamics. And you can kind of see the dynamics working here, you know, uh, and wrapping itself around that object. And then I just continue on just uh, sculpting and refining it so it fits the top of the cylinder. And then here I added one type of micro mesh. And let me turn polyframe off here, it gets too busy. So that's one kind of micro mesh. And this might be one I use too. Right, so it's basically some sort of covering on it. And then continuing it on, right, it basically comes over and I just uh, was trying different uh, micro meshes on it and ended up finally with this one uh, right here, uh, I think was the last one I ended up with. But yeah, uh, Dynamics is what I used and Dynamics is really cool because it really, you know, it basically just kind of hugs that object if you set it as a, um, that's over here. If you set that as a uh, collision volume, right? So I basically set everything as a collision volume and just let the dynamics run. I think I used deflate and expand as the two different options and it created this nice kind of envelope for me. Um, so yeah, um, it's, a, it's pretty cool to be able to do that. I mean, this new cloth function is really uh, heaven sent for me. Uh, I can really do some uh, cool stuff with it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go to one of these pieces. 
And then here, um, I created this muzzle over here, uh, and that I did with just a, a Boolean function. So I think I've got the pieces for that. Uh, I've got the grill now. Let's see, where is it? Uh, grill bool, is this it? Yep. And no, this is not it. So as I think of previous one that I had, I can actually move this whole thing into, I'll do it later. Uh, let's see, uh, where is it? Bullet feed, hatch, mech, grill bool, gun center. I think I might just have it in here. I might not have separated it out. No, uh, I think I, I do have it. Um, gun center. Okay, this is an older gun. Uh, let's see. And then you get too many folders. So, um, you know, every once in a while I, I save a version and then I clear this out because I don't really need it. Uh, oh, suppressor, it's right there. Okay, so basically um, if I hide this and show these guys. So this is how that worked out. So I basically had uh, this piece right here, right? And then I uh, have this piece, which basically is also a um, uh, kind of a, a combination of, well, actually, it's, I think it's just one item from Lightbox, and I think it's from this one. Let me make sure. Um, X, size, nope. It's maybe from this one. No, I think it's, of course, it's got to be the last one. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's this one. All right, so if I uh, show you, it's this piece right here, right? So I basically did this, extruded it out, created a mesh 3D out of it, and um, oops, and used it as a subtractor. So when I do this, you can see here that this is going to be a subtracted piece, and also uh, I have two cubes that go around like this on the suppressor. Right, and then when I uh, turn these on and turn live boolean on, you get this, right? Uh, and then it generated a mesh for me. Uh, of course, the topology isn't perfect. I did have to do some uh, work on it afterwards, but basically this is what you get uh, from that, right? So, you know, I was able to extrude this front part out, and I was also able to get a nice little bevel inside the barrel it would be nice if I could get a bevel over here, but you can see the geometry on the edge is a little bit um, kind of triangulated. So I can either look into ways of reducing that or uh, figure out maybe put another Boolean piece in there to get that bevel, uh, but it, it can be done. And also uh, this part over here, I thought of beveling it too, but it would be a nightmare. So I kind of, you know, it looks okay the way it is. I don't really think I need that kind of bevel over there. Maybe I can I use some, um, uh, kind of smooth shading on it when I bring it into Keyshot. But basically, um, this is the, the entire uh, centered gun right here, and um, it's pretty much made of really simple objects, uh, cylinders and whatnot. So let's go ahead and start working on that grill. Uh, I wanted to actually um, see if I can do a different option than what I had here. So let's choose that again, and basically I'm choosing this piece right here. Right, and then um, let's just kind of place the gun over this way, and we're just kind of going to get an idea of it. And I don't, you know, I don't really um, know exactly what I want to do yet. So let's see if there's other uh, things here that might be interesting. So let's see if we can do something like, you know, this, which is a little bit irregular for this type of grill. But let's see, maybe it'll create something interesting. And one of the things I really like about ZBrush, especially as a concept designer, is you can do a lot of trial and error with things and see if something works out or not. So maybe something like this, like that, okay. And um, that looks good. I think there's a way to mirror this over, isn't there? Let's see. Um, let's move it off here for a second. And uh, Size is good, and where's the just duplicate? Let's do that. Duplicate it, and then what I'm going to do here is uh, move it over to here, and then I'm going to um, not extend but mirror it. That would be interesting too, but let's mirror it this way. And do that with it. 
right? And what I can do now is I can just Boolean these together in union. So now I've basically created this new piece right here. And um, now I can uh, maybe uh, let's see if I can move this over to here. Really wants to snap to it. Um, it's kind of off a little bit off the center. So I kind of want to try the extenders. Let's see how that would work. Okay, it doesn't. Oh, I need to select it first. Let's select it. And the extenders, you know, like, you know, this would be kind of an interesting thing too. So it's not really regular um, like so. Okay, and then uh, what we can do. Um, I don't want to extend it a different way. Let's see if this works better. So you can see here, just with that same uh, piece, well, I can I can get a whole bunch of different variations from it. So let's put this here. Let's extend this out. So suppose I want to go with something like that. Okay. So just one button press, and that it's a 3D object now. And now let's hide spotlight, and let's move this down to here. Again, right now I'm not really worrying about topology. I'm just basically doing kind of look dev. So there it is. And let's go ahead and uh, go over here, hide this one, right? And then turn this to a negative like that. And let's turn live boolean on. So now we have this kind of a, a cut in here. And then let's kind of copy that over like that. And then continue to copy it over to see if this is something that we like. I'm not liking it that much. I'm kind of glad I did experiment with it, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep this as the kind of the final one. But that kind of created an interesting one. And let's kind of give it a little bit of a color variation here. Let's make it a little bit of a darker gray. And then we're going to color these things as soon anyway. So why? Oh, OK. And then let's just fill object. And um, that's not what I wanted to fill, but that's fine. I wanted to fill this guy. All right, so now let's go back to white. Okay, so now we can see, yeah, that's kind of adds some visual interest, but uh, it's not exactly what I want. So let's grab that one. I can also keep it uh, just in case I need it for something else, but let's do a new one. All right, let's do one more. <clears throat> let's see if there's anything interesting here. No, how about this? I think this one has a lot of really interesting uh, pieces we can use. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll go ahead and just go for um, <clears throat> this guy right here. Let's choose that one. Uh, there's kind of an eager piece right there that wants to be it, but not this time. All right, let's see this guy right here and let me just resize it place it here in the size that I want so maybe about that big right there all right that looks good like that <clears throat> excuse me all right so that's looking good and I'm just gonna go ahead and snapshot 3d it get rid of this stuff so there's that piece right and then now what I want to do is I want to make a, a copy of it like this And what I'm going to do with this one is rotate it this way and maybe bring it down and change its size to a smaller size. Right, let's zoom in. Okay, so it's about there, maybe a little bit bigger like that. And let's see, I think that looks good right there. So now I'm just going to unmask these. And what I'm going to do again is just hold control down and or uh, and copy make a copy of this to maybe about here and then just continue these until the end of the whole thing. And we might need to move this over a bit and let's see what it looks like with live boolean on and let's make it a subtractive. That'll do it. There we go. All right. So I'm liking this a lot more. This is kind of cool. It's a bit thin, but uh, this will this might work too. I think one of the things I want to do is I want to make these pieces over here, these edges, a bit thicker. 
So let's do one more of these. So again, I'll just hide this one. Actually, let's just leave it for now. And uh, let's go to uh, Spotlight. Uh, this one had a lot of really cool stuff in it. And let's make this smaller. Oops, let's make everybody smaller. And I think I need, this one was kind of, you know, too soft edges, too, its edges were too, sh too soft. So let's try doing uh, something like this. I'll try this one. I'll try the main one. How about that? <clears throat> but I'll do uh, a kind of a trick to it, which is by using extender. I'll use extender to do this. It's going to be similar to what I had before, but maybe not as much as I had it before. So that looks good right there. And what I want to do is just snapshot 3D it. And uh, I think I made it a bit too big, but that's fine. I can always resize it here. All right, so let's hide the one we had. Let's hide this one, bring this one over here. And just resize it a bit smaller. And notice here, I'm not really, oh, okay, well, this one's what's gonna cause me a problem. I wanna make sure that I put this in the center, right? It needs to be centered and over here, like so. Like that, that's good. And then what I wanna do here is just copy it, rotate around and this time I'm making sure I leave a lot more room over here this way and also the placement of it I kind of wanted to uh, you know work with some of the other things I placed over here so let's give it a little bit more room let's give it this much room I can always move this thing over to match it There we go, because things kind of, you know, when you're manufacturing things that, you know, you want them to be a little bit more deliberate in where they are. Here we go. We need to use a mouse to get this specifically where I want it. Here we go. All right, so I've got these two now, and then I just, uh, let's turn them negative already. Not you, but you. Let's go back to this. And let's turn it into a negative. <clears throat> like so. So now it's punching a hole. And then let's just kind of use that trick with, um, oh, it's still masked. So let's use that trick with moving it. So here I'm just kind of eyeballing that distance about there. And then the rest it just does for me. Like so, okay? So there's kind of half of one over here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's one that's kind of uh, not full, but it's it's going this way. So there's a couple of ways to handle that. One good way of handling it is I'll just solo it out, right? So this last one here is causing me some issues. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, oops, select that one and hide it and delete hidden. And now it basically just fits the whole thing. I think I like this one the most. And at this point, I can also go back and look at all the different ones that I have and choose which one I like the most. So we had this one to start with, right? And then we came up with this one, which, you know, was okay. And then we came up with, I guess I deleted the one with the, uh, no, it's right here. We had this weird one, uh, which, you know, was okay. It's kind of irregular. It was kind of more of a wild card. And then, of course, the one that we, I kind of like the most is this one right here. So I'm just going to um, keep that one uh, as the uh, option. <clears throat> right. And so now what I can do is, uh, since I don't need these other ones here, what I can do is let me uh, increase this up. I've got a folder called Builders up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy um, those pieces up, and uh, I put this on the on the topmost area because it's easy to just reach it by. If you click on something, just go all the way to the top and just drop it in there. And then there was that third one which we didn't want. So the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to clutter up this menu. There's a lot in there already. So let's put that in builders too. So now it's in builders. I might use them later. I might decide to use them or not. And if not, I can always delete that folder. 
Um, but yeah, so now we've kind of got that. It looks okay. And uh, I think we pretty much have everything going for this. I don't really like this um, um, hinge that I have for it. So I might either redo this or work on it. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> Sergio, hello, how are you? Good to have you on. Um, all right, so some people like this. Cool, cool, cool. All right, <clears throat> great, no questions. If you guys have questions, just ask away uh, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right, so now we're on this piece right here. Let me turn the Boolean off for a minute. And uh, so we're on this piece right here and uh, let me see if I've got the undo steps for this. Let's get it back to, I think I kind of like this part of it. Like so. <clears throat> but this area right here is a bit too thin. Excuse me. So let's uh, add. Q mesh to that. And by the way, I, I don't know if I have dynamic subdiv on on this guy. I should turn it on and let's add a Q grid of one and a coverage of like so, just to kind of not have those sharp angles. And let's use a chamfer instead of a bevel. Let's go to Q grid of two and a coverage of that's about good all right so now um, looking at this thing it's looking a little bit better it's got some weird stuff going on over here which I can fix by let me choose clip curve now let's make sure symmetry is on it is good all right <clears throat> I guess that didn't really help much. Okay, so that's good. All right, and um, so if you guys don't have questions, let me ask some questions. Uh, where are you guys tuning in from? How about that? What city are you in? What country? It's like nobody wants to say, nobody wants to be the first. All right, so this thing's kind of acting weird from, um, let's do mirror and weld on this guy. Oops, wrong way. Okay, for me to make hard service is a little difficult. Uh, Puerto Rico, Los Angeles, Seattle, and Niagara Falls. Wow, Canada, awesome. Um, yeah, you know, it, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I say this every time, but I don't really look at hard surface or soft surface to me. Surface is surface. And, um, I mean, I understand that there are some, you know, like if you just do one thing, then you might get a, get better at it and you might be known for it. So for example, you know, people say I do a lot of hard surface stuff, so I'm really good at hard surface, but I also do uh, other things too. But I'm probably, you know, good at hard service because I do it a lot and people know me for it. So, but I think um, if you kind of polish your skills, you can, um, you know, you can uh, probably do both really well. Let's do a insert here. Turn Polyframe on for a minute. I'm just basically creating, you know, a um, an area for this where it can uh, right and then maybe I'll put like some sort of tube or something in there and expand this out yep. maybe go up this way so what's nice about uh, a Q, Q, uh, Q mesh is you can kind of get different results from different angles. So let's see if I this can go up. And yeah, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that look that's looking a little bit more interesting. Maybe that last part wasn't really work good. And I think I can kind of collapse this down and then come up at an angle. There we go. Right, so a lot of this is just easily kind of done. And then let's kind of put a groove in here. Um, let's inset, so let's polygroup. Let me turn polyframe on. I'm going to polygroup this guy. I'm just using kind of the quick polygroup with Alt 
and then just use inset uh, to bring this not insert where is it inset yep and we want not each poly but this area so we're just going to do something like this and then uh, let's Q mesh this in and I'm going to do the quick kind of poly group again with the alt key and push this in a bit like that right so it kind of creates this type of a thing and let's look at what that looks like without the poly frame on that's okay and I don't kind of like these kind of sharp edges up here so I'm just going to use slide to bring this down like that so that kind of looks a little bit better yep that's working for me all right so now I kind of want to do the same thing with this panel right here so what I'm going to do is um, let's turn polyframe on again I'm going to choose this one this one this one let's say these two also and then what I'm going to do is inset all these in right and the new inset in ZBrush is pretty nice because it gives me an exact kind of um, setting there and then I'm going to um, let's go ahead and use the quick poly group with the alt key again we put edge to do nothing here use the slide in a bit Okay, so this is complaining that it's not uh, symmetric so I'll just do mirror and weld that will make it symmetric and all right so we got all these guys and I'm just going to and let's pick the two on top and I'm going to Q mesh all these guys in so I've got that and then I also want to slide this um, over here this edge I want to slide it up uh, like that which is kind of doing something I don't want it to do I want to all right, so to do the what I want to do I need to add another edge loop in here so there's one maybe one more over here all right so now that slide will work Oops. I have to get to this edge right here so I'm going to zoom in on it so yeah this is kind of more along the lines of what I wanted so I just had to add a couple of edge loops to get that and I might want to do the same thing over here All right so I'm going to add one more edge loop in here yeah, that edge loop went everywhere so maybe maybe not okay let's see if I can just do it with a slide in the other direction Yep, that works. Okay, so we'll do that. Now I could have, you know, if I want to do kind of that thing where, um, where's this angled? Uh, here we go. Okay, so what I want to also do is maybe have like some bars going on the inside. Or what I could also do is I could just Q mesh something out. So, um, I'll just do the bars the way you know uh, so you guys can see how I would do that uh, all right so we got oh wow look at all these people from all over the world Boston Egypt uh, Vancouver of course uh, Warsaw Poland Wow Georgia New Delhi Russia um, all right good uh, all right yeah Vitaly Bulgarov is really good at at, uh, at hard surface and uh, soft as well yep he's pretty good all right, so let's say I want to do some cut-ins like this. Although I don't think Vitaly uses ZBrush for hard surface. I think he uses uh, Moment of Inspiration, uh, which is pretty cool too. Um, all right, so there's these. So now if I want to um, just bring these out, of course the topology is getting worse and worse, and but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to again polygroup these guys and also polygroup these guys right here. All right, now I really don't know if this is all being done on the other side. Uh, I'll find out soon enough. And then let's just use QMesh. So here for the material, I've got uh, basic material too, which has a little bit of a, a glint to it. So I'm going to turn that off. 
Also, my lighting is pretty intense, so let me turn down the lighting a bit here. It's 1.5. Let's go to 1. All right, that works good. And I think we can just go back to that. I kind of like this material because it gives me a little bit of a specular, and I like how that works. All right, so... And now I'm just going to lift this up and then I get these type of kind of things going on as well. So I also have it angled so uh, this is looking exactly the way I want it. Of course one of the things that makes hard surface looks better, look better is um, bolts and, and things like that so we'll be doing some of those in a bit as well. Alright so let's kind of do the same effect up here. Let's bring up polyframe and let's use quick Poly grouping here, and let's just do this whole thing up here, like so. And uh, let's use inset. And uh, we'll inset this a bit more, like that. And then we'll just Q mesh this part. Oops. I'm going to say Q mesh polygroup island. There's too many stuff, too many things to select. This is kind of fast. Okay, so I've got a bit of a problem here because when I did the inset, uh, there are some lines here that cross. So I need to make sure I stop before they do or I need to figure something else out. Um, so something else I'm going to figure out is to use um, the stand or the legacy way of insetting. Uh, and that gives me a little bit more room, I think. Maybe not that much. Um, I could slide this point in. So maybe this one too. And that will give me the capability to do it. So before I do that, no, let's just do this. I think this is good enough. All right, and then I'm just going to QMesh Polygroup Island and just push this in, like maybe till about there. And then I've got these over here. So I'm just going to QMesh a single poly, and I've got uh, these here that I could just bring up. since it's a continuation of what was over on this side. All right, so again, if I turn poly group off here, that's good. And then I might do some of that thing with sliding some of these corners. So let me see what the poly, uh, let's insert an edge over here. Let's see if the, um, if I can get a kind of a clean uh, edge here. It looks like I can. And let's just get off, uh, maybe to here is good. And I'm just gonna slide this over. And uh, maybe this one over here as well. It's a bit too much. I think this one's going to have some trouble. So I'm going to insert another edge loop in here. So uh, I get that bend, but not too much of it. All right, so uh, let's see, any questions? No questions. All right, so we got quite a few people. Anybody not mention where they're from? Um, anybody from Australia? Usually have somebody from Australia, that might work. And on this one, I think I've got this kind of angle thing here going, so I'll maybe leave that one be. Then what I can also do is I can inset this part. Right here, inset, inset each poly and inset this. And Q mesh it out. Uh, Pakistan, wow, Manitoba, California, Cyprus. Hey, all right. I know where that is. I've been there. It's a beautiful island. Where in Cyprus are you? <clears throat> oh, Mexico. Wow, geez, Louise. Talk about full-on international here. Uh, all right, uh, so um, yeah, if you can tell me where you are in Cyprus, that would be great. All right, I'm 
just going to QMesh here, a single poly, this one. Let's go up with this one and do one of these lips like that. So now this thing's looking a lot better. I think there's too many things pointing in that direction. So uh, there's this pointing in that direction, there's that pointing in that direction. So I'm going to balance it out. Oh, Columbia. Wow. Jeez Louise. I've not been to Columbia. Would love to go. All right. Let's see. And adding this piece. I kind of added a wonky thing there. I don't know if I want that. And then maybe this can come out a little bit like that. All right. So now we have this piece a little bit more detailed. I like it much better. And then let's see if I can um, slide these in a bit. Wow, Argentina. I think I think we have a representation from every, if, if we get Australia and uh, I guess Africa, we can get every continent represented. All right, so let's see. Let me add one more here. It's adding a few edge loops. Wow, these are going all over the place. Maybe just one. And then um, I just want to bring this one in. Oh, it's going all over the place too. Q mesh these two in. So I got a little bit of an angle over here. All right, friends is saying we they have beautiful women. Who, where are you from? Oh, Colombia. Okay, yeah, uh, I agree. All right, Japan. Yes, I went to Japan. The last two places I went were uh, Japan, and I would love to go back. So whenever this pandemic thing ends, I'm going to go to Japan for another visit, for sure. I have a list of places to go. Uh, it was a lot of fun. All right. I'm new to ZBrush and I have not used ZModeler yet, but I will soon. So I'm moving Z here to get base mesh and then use adaptive skin. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, watch the. Okay, so this is a good time to mention this. Um, this is episode five of what we're doing. So if you go to ZBrush Live right here and. Um, and ZBrush Live, you can kind of see all the videos. I think I should be on here live if uh, I am. And um, if you scroll down, I'm sorry, if you go to presenters and scroll down, uh, you can uh, you can find me in, in here. And where am I? They always add uh, streamers, so it keeps moving around. Let's see here. If I go past, let me know. I did go past. I'm in color, so it should come up right away. Where is it? Here we are. It's the one column I wasn't looking at. So if you go to my uh, uh, presenter page, right, you can see um, here are all the, the previous episodes. And if you go to the first episode of this, uh, it should be season five. It's season five, episode one. If you go to the first episode, I go through and, um, and I'll just launch this real quick. I go through and uh, this is so meta. So here you can kind of see me block it out with Z-spheres, right? So I actually start with Zizu. Um, no, wait a minute. Maybe the first episode isn't on here. That's not cool. Oh, yes, it is. It's right. It's this one. Right. So if you start with this one, uh, at the beginning, you can kind of see me block it out. So, you know, I start out with Z-spheres like that. And then um, I create the mech from the Z-spheres, right? So you guys can see this. Uh, so if you go watch this episode uh, and then just follow up until, so we get one, two, three, four, five. I guess today is uh, six, uh, episode six. So uh, I thought it was five for some reason. But yeah, you can find that. Or you can also go to the um, Pixlogic 
um, channel here uh, on YouTube. Uh, by the way, it's a good idea to subscribe to it. That way you can kind of get a reminder if new things are coming up or when my next uh, thing is coming up, right? So if you subscri subscribe to it, you can see it. And also if you just look for videos here, if you just do search by my name, so you look for Ara, I think there's only one of me, so you can kind of see all of my uh, streams in on YouTube as well. So whichever you know service you feel more comfortable with, you can either see it on ZBrush Live or you can see it on YouTube. You can watch the previous episodes, and today's episode, like every other one, will be um, will be um, recorded, right? So you can always watch this after the fact and see if you've missed something. All right, uh, New Zealand. All right, cool. So I think, is that the same continent as Australia? I know you guys don't like to be grouped with Australia, but <laughs> uh, so um, that's great. Um, where in New Zealand are you? Are you in Wellington? That's another uh, destination that I want to go to at some point. Uh, okay, so Control F. Control, oh, you want to see the polyframe? No, what's Control F? Oh, Control F is create a folder. Um, I think you wanted to, do you, uh, do you want to see the wireframe? Is that what you were asking? I don't know. Um, I will watch, okay, cool, great. So yeah, this is kind of coming together, right? And then uh, let's go to this thing over here, some sort of optic, optical thing. So uh, the mech itself, let me bring it back up. The mech itself is going to have kind of a optics area. Um, so it is going to have some optics in this area right here. So I'm, you know, um, one of the things I always like to do is give uh, my pieces a face. So here I got kind of some cool cat eyes going. Excuse me, I need a drink of tea here. Oh, okay, um, cool. Uh, James, thanks for that. Control F. So the the um, point he was making is that if I go to, uh, is that for YouTube or is that for um, for ZBrush Live? Let's see. Control F. Yep. Uh, control F. Well, I guess you know. Uh, I guess Control F is for the browser, right? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know how to make these pipes up there. Okay. Good. We'll show you how to make the pipes. We'll make some pipes too. You're talking about the pipes on the gun, right? Like these guys right here. You're talking about these. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to be doing, um, uh, or any of these, yeah, well, yes, uh, I guess that's, that's a good point. Control F is the find or search, uh, option, uh, the default option. Okay. So I think you were asking about these tubes and we will make some tubes today. So I will create another one on the bottom. Uh, so you guys can see how that's done. It is using, uh, Z spheres and it works really well. Um, okay, so I guess the thing I was going to also, the only reason why I brought the mech up is to say that there's going to be some optics here, basically some range finders and things like that, maybe up here as well. Uh, this is kind of a little thing I added, maybe we'll add another gun there, Gatling gun or something. And um, and so, um, but let's go back to uh, tubes and create some tubes here. Uh, gun center is on, let's turn the mech off. Okay, so we're here. And... Um, See, I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Okay, yeah. So we'll insert some uh, Z spheres. Uh, so here is this. Let's go all the way to the bottom of this thing. To here. Well, actually, like like right about here. That actually was a good place. And let's insert a Z sphere. All right, and then uh, we'll rescale that Z-sphere down. So E for scale up here. I'm sorry, S, not E. Uh, all right, and then just bring that down and then to move it. Now, if I want this to stay in the center, I'll turn symmetry on. And now as I move it, it's going to stay in the center. So this is the root Z-sphere. Uh, it doesn't matter where it goes. I usually like to kind of leave it in the middle. And then uh, let's start adding a couple of spheres to this. So in draw mode, so draw up here, uh, which is also um, Q. Yeah, we'll draw one. If I hold shift down, it does it in the same size. And then we'll add one on the other side. So here, if I want to actually add two Z spheres, have them be exactly the same size and be exactly on each of those sides, 
I'm also going to uh, turn on Z symmetry, right? Because uh, Z is going in, right? You guys can see the guy's face. So Z is blue, it's going in. And now you can kind of see it locks in over there. And uh, as I draw my, oh no, don't crash. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so tragic. Let's see, I didn't even, I didn't auto save too. So we lost pretty much a lot of what we did, but that's fine. Oh. All right, let's see what it brings up. Well, it did save a, a quick save, 357. Now, I'm really hoping that this has what... Uh, um, it happens very rarely to me, so whenever it does happen, I'm like, ah! <laughs> but uh, it's a good reminder to save often. But the good news is that, you know, uh, ZBrush does its automatic saves, so I think we should be we should be good to go. And I did do a save before I started this, so, you know. Sometimes when I get this happen, it's I look at it as an opportunity um, to um, maybe make some minor changes, do some things. Um, yeah, every program crashes. Anybody that tells you things don't crash is lying. Um, every computer crashes. Every computer has issues. Nobody can write a program that's completely crash-proof. And if you do, then you have to spend a lot of time looking at every single possibility. Uh, and there's specific languages for that too. So when I was in college, I learned how to program uh, kind of, um, you know, I think the defense industry was big in California then. So they taught me languages on how to program things for like, you know, uh, satellites and uh, things that basically you can't reprogram. Uh, oh, we're back to here. Yeah, damn. We lost this whole thing over here. That's fine. And we lost our little thing there too. So I might just redo those very, very quickly. Um, but let's do the Z-Sphere thing first. All right. Um, shoot. I wonder if I should load the saved version instead. I think this is good. All right. So um, I have no idea what programming language ZBrush uses. Uh, I'm assuming probably C uh as uh you know uh, it's definitely not written in uh java <laughs> okay um yeah it happens you know it happens every once in a while i usually have quick save on but i think i turned it down so it doesn't take too long uh to do it um but that's fine all right so uh paint and note block never okay um oh, zbrush token anybody here doing the nft stuff Kind of curious. I haven't jumped in yet. Kind of curious if anybody here is doing it. Um, I'll probably put a few things up. Um, I have plenty of work to put up, believe me. Uh, I might even create something new. Maybe when I finish this mech, I'll put it up as an NFT. Not the um, digital file, but all the um, image. I'll create some cool images with it and put it up on NFT uh, and people can buy it. I, w I doubt that uh, anything I make will sell for $69 million, but uh, one can hope. Um, Harry Mandibles, you jumped into NFT world tonight. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what what are you? Um, NFT is the devil. Wow. All right. Look at all these opinions. Um, so what what um, which NFT side are you are you putting your stuff on? Um, Harry Mandible. I love that word, by the way. Harry Mandibles. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna kind of forego doing the things that I did and just do the Z-Sphere thing. I'll do those later. It's easy enough to do. Um, all right, so let's just go back in here and go to over here, insert Z-Sphere. And this time I'm going to make sure I save more frequently. All right, so let's bring the scale a bit down. Let's make sure symmetry's on. And let's move it over down to here. And let's make it smaller. Uh, we're on 
fun okay a foundation but once goes we're going to switch to rareable okay if you're on foundation did they give you any um to any uh, invitations for people and if they did how many did they give you curious i haven't applied yet but um i will i don't know though i think they're probably getting swamped right now so uh, if i have an invitation uh why switch to rareable uh, recommendation I, I don't know Comic Legend is asking why switch to uh, Rarible. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a difference in these uh, sites. I think um, I think some of them are more curated than the others. I think that's one difference. And then uh, also, all right, so why is this kind of getting all weird like that? Uh, symmetry, let's go to local symmetry. Nah. Tweet symmetry, X and Z. All right, so, oh, that's why. So this is what I was trying to do earlier, but for some reason it's not wanting to do it. It does four just fine, but how about just two? Okay. All right, we saturated with concept art and we're doing something that's more of ongoing series. I'll probably stand out, okay, good. Um, oh, so you only get one when you first join, or do you get one um, in addition to yours? Like, do you get one additional to yours, or do you just um, get, like, do you get two, one for yourself and one for somebody else, or do you just get one to start with, with foundation? I guess I cannot find this out on their website. All right, so I'm just going to not do the Z symmetry here since it caused an issue earlier. I'm just going to do X symmetry, go to Q, draw a Z sphere this way, shift, bam, there it is. And uh, I'm going to put one on the other side, like so, and there that is. And let's um, go to W and move these to where we want them to go. Uh, like a wallet, if I'm okay, well, there was one you set up, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, when you find out, if you can um, get a hold of me and let me know, that'd be great. So I guess this would be a good time to show you guys this. Um, if you guys are interested in what I do, just go to kermaco.com, so K-E-R-M-A-C-O.com, right, right here. And this has the link to everything, right? So if you want to send me an email, you can send me an email here. Uh, get in touch with me via Facebook. Uh, that has my Facebook profile. I think I've got some room for some friends still. I'm kind of getting uh, close to the cap, but I think I've got some room to go. I think maybe about another 400 people I can add. Uh, my Instagram, which is what I keep more very common. So uh, if you find out about Foundation, here's my email address. Or if anybody has a to uh, inv invite to send me, uh, send it to my email address. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, like, like I said again, I'm probably, if I just ask my friend, somebody can come up with one. But if you guys have one just laying around doing nothing, um, it would help to get it. So here's the link to my Instagram. And I don't know, is Instagram down? Is that even possible? I'll just wait for it to come back up. So my Behance, I, have, I haven't even looked at that forever. So uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm going to start putting some tutorials on there. So keep an eye out for that. My Twitter, which I don't really, I'm not very active on, but I will be once I get this NFT thing going. I've got a Pinterest, not much in it. Uh, LinkedIn, which is the most boring site ever. Um, it's like, you know, uh, you know how a mullet is a, a um, business in the front, party in the back. So Facebook is a party in the back and LinkedIn is the, uh, or business in the front is LinkedIn and party in the back is Facebook. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, yep, here's Instagram. So uh, all my new stuff on Inst is on Instagram, right? So these are more recent things. This is a, a tire pack I'm working on. I uh, did some cars a while back. So uh, all my recent stuff is on Instagram, and I'll be minting some of these things soon. Um, one of the things I want to mint is are these uh, spheres of influence. Maybe I'll mint one of these guys. So um, we'll see. All right, so uh, yeah, just keep an eye out. And uh, if you guys are interested in buying, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how these things go. Uh, they might go up in price or, I, uh, you know, I don't know where these end up eventually. Um, but yeah, uh, so again, if you want to contact me, uh, just go to kermaco.com and this top bar over here has all my social media. 
All right. Um, all right, so let's go back into this. Man, it would be awesome to have another form of revenue than having to work places that basically, um, I mean, there some places are a lot of fun. I gotta admit, some of the places I've worked have been amazing, um, but sometimes it's a grind. So if I have another form of revenue, I can continue to do these tutorials and continue to do things that I wanna do instead of, um, Know, having to do some of the gigs that I do. And I think that's kind of what uh, artists are really liking about this NFT stuff is that um, now you get to kind of do what you want to do and be recognized for it. And it's a good revenue stream for artists. Um, so yeah, I bet that'll change a lot over the years too. So yeah, you do something like this, right? For the tube. And I don't know if this is going to be where it ends up being but let's assume something goes all the way back to here. And, you know, if you have X symmetry on, you can kind of get this to be exactly the way you want it to be. So let's say I want something like this. All right, and if I want to add more visual interest to it, uh, I can do that later. But now if I press A, I get this, which is exact, not really what I want, right? I don't really want something like this. And the reason why it comes up like this is because uh, by default, with adaptive skin, the default is that Dynamesh is on. So if you turn Dynamesh off, preview it again, then it's, it basically comes more or less of uh, what you want, right? And uh, you can make this a little bit better by adding, um, um, you know, uh, some other things too. So if you go back here, if I add another Z sphere here and Z sphere here. You can notice that it add gives me that nice little corner, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add one Z sphere here, one Z sphere here, and again I got that nice corner. Let me um, go back, move this Z sphere in a bit, right? So my move mode, right? And I know all this is going to be happening in the center because I've got uh, symmetry on. And once I'm done with that, I can move this to somewhere else. Um, okay. So A one more time, all right, this is looking good, um, but maybe I want it to be thinner, right? So if I want this to be thinner, well, what I do is, um, oh no, is this gonna be, oh no, it's gonna, it's probably doing a quick save. All right, let's just let it do it, its thing. In the meantime, I'll read some um, stuff here. Have you been able to uh, incorporate any of the new ZBrush features into? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you watch my previous uh, episode, like the one before this one, so episode five, I guess, uh, this one right here. Uh, where is it? Nope. Um, did I close? No, here it is. Okay, so if you go to this episode, so the one right before this one, this one right here, uh, you will um, see that I go over some of the new stuff that I, um, right, so here I kind of go through and, and show some of the new stuff, uh, show those uh, mask brushes. So, um... Oh man, I think ZBrush crashed in the back, uh, but it will save this time. It is saving. Whew. All right, so we don't have to go uh, over it. I don't know why it's crashing. Uh, I think maybe I'm doing something wrong with the Z spheres, but... Uh, We'll, we'll get it, we'll get it done. Um, so yeah, the new features are awesome. That um, the masking capabilities, the new masking where you can insert pieces on top are really cool and I'll be using that today. Um, and then, um, you know, there, there's a lot of new stuff that's great in this uh, version. So definitely go to uh, ZBrush 2021.6.2. I think that's the latest one. I don't think they've come up with anything after that. So the other thing I want to do next time is lighten up my scene so it doesn't take this long to uh, load because not only do I have a lot of sub tools, but I also have a bunch of tools as well. So I'll kind of reduce them. Uh, it, it could be because I'm streaming as well, yeah. Um, but I think, um, you know, um, but I think uh, maybe with the Z spheres, if I'm clicking somewhere where I shouldn't be, it's reacting you know, a weird way. So I think we'll be okay this time around. All right, 
starting ZBrush one more time. What I really like about this new version also with 26.2 is what it does is it allows you to uh, restore recover document. I think this was it. No. It'll go ahead and recover it. If this keeps happening, I'll load the tool, not the whole project. Uh, well, no, I, I do need the whole project. Uh, but I think we should be okay uh, this time around. So I guess the thing to uh, consider is that if you are going to be using Z-Spheres in a heavy model, uh, make sure you, um, you're you not streaming and also that you have your, uh, you have your um, um, quick save um, on for more frequent quick saves. All right, it's a bit of a file, so it's it's loading. We'll get there. In the meantime, if you guys have questions, ask away. This is a good time to uh, to respond to some of the questions. Uh, I'm really amazed. So the guy from Cyprus, did you tell me where in Cyprus you are? You did not. GG, are you still on? Oh, I don't know if he's still on. All right. Okay, so we're back here. And yeah, I think this is kind of what happened is, so let me solo that. Um, all right, so somebody Pac-Man Eats 13 is just came on. Hello, I guess. All right, so I kind of lost all my undo stack here, which is kind of bad, but it's fine. And then let me go to, I don't need this Z-sphere right here. So let me uh, get rid of it. And I think that's what caused the issue. All right, so if I press A now, so I kind of have this. And I'm not really worried about the caps just now. Uh, I like them to be rounded, but I can make them s smaller. But I think the thing I was going to do is make this thinner. And to do that, um, you just go to um, scale, and then you scale um, from the root z-sphere like so. Right, and if you want this to be exactly right now, right now this might be a little bit thicker or thinner. I mean, I can ob observationally see that it is a bit thinner over here. So let's make this a bit thicker, like so. So notice from the root on is what this affects. So you just kind of do the two ends, right? And let's bring everything back up, press A. Okay, so that this is looking pretty good. And so now all I need to do is um, just go down here under Adaptive Skin and click on Make Adaptive Skin. And that does it, it just creates a tool right here. There it is. And to add it to our scene, we just go over to here and we just insert that new tool that's been created, insert, there it is, and there it is. So we don't want the Z-Sphere version yet. We want the skin of it. A recovered tool is what it's called. <laughs> All right, and then we can just move this to wherever we want. Now, once I've done this, I can still do some uh, cool edits. So here, um, I don't really know if I want that to be there. Uh, let's center this without symmetry. And also, uh, what I want to do here is just move it over to the side. And let's say I want to turn this around and put it somewhere else. So maybe this will be somewhere up here, like maybe over here like that. Maybe at the bottom and maybe I'll rotate it like this. Maybe this is like some sort of a stand that it stands on uh, at when they are lowering it to the ground or getting maintenance done on it. So it looks good over there like that. Let's make sure it kind of merges in with something we have. So let me rotate it some more and push it in. All right, so I'll just have to create some sockets for it, but it looks good kind of about there. 
like so. And I'll just create some sockets for it. Now, one other thing I should mention before I do any of this is um, you can also, like if you don't like these ends being rounded like this, uh, you can just use the, um, um, by the way, I should also mention what my adaptive uh, skin settings are over here. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's kind of important. Oh, I guess I need to go to this one to show that. So if I go to adaptive skin over here, so make sure your Dynamesh resolution is at zero. And also your you can even reduce the density, like you can make it even uh, uh, thinner. Uh, I'll keep it at two. Two is good for something that's kind of a tube-like. And that subdivides well too, so two is a good one to stand with. And that's basically how you do your um, um, <clears throat> your adaptive skin settings, right? And uh, now let's go back to that part over here. And what I was going to say is if you don't want these caps to be um, rounded, you can just use the clip curve and just clip them like so. So now they're more kind of straight. Let's do the same thing on this side. All right, so we're getting there. So now I just have straight edges on each side. And now let's say I want to, and what's cool about this is you can always kind of select these two. So I'm just going to mask this one. Let me just choose mask lasso and select this one right here, invert it. And then you can also like, you know, put these at a, at a kind of, you know, if you want this to be put the gizmo over here and you can rotate this so it kind of, you know, it does that. Uh, I mean, I know it's it kind of ruins the, the curve curvature a bit uh, over here. Like, I think there's some points that are masked that shouldn't be. So I'll just do another mask like so. Invert the mask. And again, you can move this part. What is going on? All right. Let's do this one more time. Invert the mask. Oh, that's what's going on. This is unlocked. All right, here we go. And invert the mask and move this to where you want it to be. It gives you a little bit more, you know, uh, of, of, of uh, an, you know, a, a way to kind of move the ends to where you want them to go. All right, so let's center this and Reset our gizmo. And uh, move this to somewhere where we said we wanted it, down here like this, at an angle. Maybe to about here. So then I got to figure out how this attaches to the rest of the gun, which shouldn't be that hard to do. All right, there's that. And uh, I just want to make sure that that's a good place for it. And then let's mirror and weld this so we have it on the other side. Oh, that's a good point. So this thing has two subdivision levels. So it has this as the first subdivision level. And, uh, and then it has one other subdivision level after that. So what I, uh, you know, I mean, two is good. I'll just delete the lower. Uh, oh no, this is too much. Let's delete the higher subdivision level. So we just have this. And if I press D, then it basically creates kind of this uh, uh, dynamic subdiv version of it. Then I can just mirror and weld it to the other side. So now I've got those two kind of things on the bottom. And that's pretty much how I created this tube on top, right? Uh, and uh, so that's good. And now what I can do is just figure out some caps for this. Um, I could, you know, let's see. Maybe I'll do it with um, light, uh, spotlight. And let's go into these handles here and see if I can do something with these guys. Uh, 
uh, maybe this one right here might be interesting or this one this one's probably better all right so let's pick this one bring it over and resize it and here I'm just going to snapshot it the way it is that's fine get rid of snap that and let's just rotate this around like so And again, I can adjust the uh, thickness as I want to. Move this over, make this smaller, and bring it up here. I wonder if an NFT of something will be worth more if there's a tutorial on how to make it, right? Like a lot of these guys have all sorts of stuff that they have on there, but uh, they don't have a video of how to make it. So with this thing, if I NFT this guy, then... Um, you know, there's the added bonus of like, here's how it was made. I don't know. Again, I'm new to this whole NFT business, so I don't know what works and what doesn't. All right, I'm just kind of trying to figure out what a good way to do this is. And I think this is kind of looking okay. I'll have to do something in the front, of course. Um, but uh, is this perspective on? No. Why is this not centered? center it so if it's something is off-center like this is off-center right now uh, the best thing to do is make sure uh, symmetry is off and then center the um, gizmo on it and then center it on the world and now you can oh let it select that here we go that guy all right so first thing is gizmo centered and then center this on the world and then you can bring it down and now it is centered um, Move it to where it was, so about here. Like that, and then let's make a copy of this thing in the back. All right, so now I, I don't want it to interfere with this kind of shape over here, because this kind of shape I want to keep as uh, as it is. So here I want to make this shorter, right? This thing that I generated shorter. The good news is that it's got really good topology. Let's turn transparency and ghost on so you guys can see through this. So I want to make this shorter. And so what I want to do is delete some edge loops here. So uh, let's delete some in the middle. So all I'm doing here is just deleting some edge loops because I want to make the size smaller like that. Okay, and the front part is good, so I'll just mask that part. Oh, I got lasso on, mask it this way. Now I can just move this in, right? So that's how you resize these uh, things that you create with Z-spheres after you've gone ahead and created them. So I could insert some edge loops here, or I can continue to move this oops, uh, in further. So this would be kind of the equivalent of what I had, but this is good enough right here, and I can just maybe insert an edge loop or two just to balance it out if I need to. So I'll just put one in the middle here. And I don't need all these edge loops. I can get rid of them, but they're good where they are. Um, all right. So let's turn transparency off. That looks good like that. So I basically created this tubey thing over here. Uh, this can move in even further to here. And then this one, I can move even in more. Okay, so the kind of this end part is hidden, uh, but I think you can kind of catch it from a different angle. And then I'll probably have to put a couple of pieces in here, so let's go ahead and do that. Again, using Spotlight. Uh, let's go to here, and uh, let's choose maybe something like this. Like that, and let's pick one of these guys and let's snapshot 3d this thing okay and let's get rid of all that all right, this thing is way too long but it doesn't matter it doesn't create geometry in the middle right so when you do that snapshot 3d uh, there's no geometry in the middle so you can resize it uh, depth wise pretty easily like that and maybe this goes over here to 
to plug that part. Can we go up a bit? Like there. Kind of keep want to keep this curvature over here. All right, and then let's mirror this to the other side. Okay, so there's that, there's that. And then I can choose the thickness of it uh, if I want it to be going in inwards of this. And there it is. Let's see what that looks like. That's good enough, but uh, I think it'd look better if it was pu pulling, pushing out a bit. All right, and then what if I activate symmetry, move it in? All right, so all the 2D artists that do concept design, I mean, they do this stuff in 2D, but once they're done, they're done, right? It's a 2D image. They can't manipulate things anymore. So I'm going to try something even different here and rotating it like that. Uh, whoops that all right let's turn polyframe off okay so that's good and then I just want to copy this exact same thing to the back and there's that too so that's done so those that I just added that to be part in the middle and since I like this I'm going to quick save see you learn and this will be a good time to kind of look at all the different feedback and um, Okay, so Jimmy, you're asking what the difference is between an insert and append. I'll show you guys that. And, um, and ice cream is all about ice cream and bunnies. Great. Okay, so um, as this is saving, um, I'll just kind of go over and show you where insert and append are. They're down here, right? So there's append and there's insert. And... Um, as soon as this thing is over, it'll be good to have a quick save of this because I don't want to uh, make all those things I did in the bottom again. All right, so we're almost there. Good time for some tea. All right, so if I want to, um, so here I'm in my subtool list, okay? If I append, so let's append a polygroup uh, or a, a polymesh 3D, append, polymesh 3D, append will put it all the way at the end, right? So it's all the way at the bottom. So, and also it's not selected. Whatever tool you're on is selected. So I was on this tool and that's what's selected. Okay. Uh, if I want to get, uh, if I don't want it there, if I want to, um, let's delete this one. So now I'm here on this tool, or subtool, sorry. Let me just go to one of these subtools, maybe the one I just created. Uh, where is that pipe? Here it is, right? So I'm on this subtool, and um, where did those two things go that I just added? That's weird. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I think this is the original Z-Sphere version. That's not what I wanted. So let's say I'm here on this one. Okay, so I'm on this subtool right here and let me tell them to turn polyframe on. So I'm on this subtool, this here, right here. And now if I insert that PolyMesh 3D, it does two things. One of them is it inserts it right after the tool I was on and selects it, right? So insert will put it where you are in your subtool list and will select it for you and append will add it to the end of your uh, subtools at the bottom of your subtools and will co uh, continue to have your current uh, sub uh, subtool selected okay does that make sense hopefully that answers your question um, Giles 117 is your 117 from Halo is that where that number is from Spartan 117, I guess it was called. Okay, so uh, there's that. I will, I'll do this other part uh, offline and I'll also do this offline as well, uh, which is kind of a bummer, but that's how it's gotta go. Um, all right, we're, yeah, we've got about a half an hour more to go, so we'll do that then. So now I wanna work on this part and that's kind of where we started. Uh, we went off on the tangent of, uh, this is going to be some sort of an optical thing that finds um, what, you, uh, what you need. Um, 
to shoot, right? So each gun has its optics, and then the mech itself will have its own optics as well. So let's kind of figure out what we want to do with this piece. All right, so first things first, this right here is uh, interfering with that tube shape, and I kind of wanted to do this with it. So I'm just going to move this inwards a little bit. Right there, okay, and I want that also to show a little bit of the teeth down below. So this is kind of like a Picatinny rail, but it's like a really big one, right? So they can add like really big, you know, bigger than a human being kind of optics or uh, attachments to it, right? So those go on top. Um, Comic Legends saying, uh, okay, uh, almost five am here and I'm gonna go, okay, Jimmy, uh, good night, I guess. You're gonna go to sleep. Um, all right. <laughs> And then uh, let's go back to this piece right here. I'm gonna turn polyframe on and let's start working on it. So first things first, let's add some edges to it. Go back to Z modeler, insert, symmetries on. So there's that. And then we just wanna add, let's see what's on this. Q mesh of poly, good. So let's Q mesh these down, oops. All right, so how you grow your, um, your um, model is important, right? It's important to kind of add edge loops uh, minimally so that you don't have to do too many steps. So here, notice that if I had subdivided that edge this way, then I'd have to Q-mesh two things, whereas now I just want to Q-mesh one thing. And here I'm just going to do this to that, and then I'm going to slide this edge up like so. Right, and that's kind of creating this uh, little thing that's holding on to the Picatinny rail. And then I'm also going to do this on the inside. So I'm gonna add an edge loop, oops, right here. Like so I'm gonna Q-mesh this up like that. Okay, so I kind of have, I mean, let's see if I can get that same exact angle. Um, that works okay congratulations you've uh okay received 100 messages oh great um yep uh master chief that's great <laughs> uh, i do render to key shot yeah um and i did some of that i think uh, last episode and we'll do that uh, I'll, I'll shoot the gun over to, to key shot we'll play around with it in key shot a little bit before i end the stream that might be a fun way to end it um but yeah Let's do something like this. All right. There we go. All right. So what I want to do is create like this kind of a thing over here. What is going on? All right, there it is, F to focus on it, and then solo. Oh, I clicked on expose extent. <laughs> All right, no worries. All right, and I'm just gonna do this, and one more, and then do this, like that, and like that. All right, and this is just gonna be, you know, again, you probably, you know, uh, of course, you're not going to see that. I went too far. And these are things that just, they're just little details that, you know, might show up or might not show up. But maybe if I do this, right, it looks like it's attaching somehow to that rail. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, we'll add screws and stuff later. That's a really fun uh, way of doing that. But let's continue to work on this thing a little bit more. All right. Um, Aizen, thank you very much. A lot more to come. Work-wise. All right, and there's that. And then let's just build this up, continue to build it up. And let's get more of a square shape here. Let's insert 
like this thing doesn't seem to be centered so let's just mirror and weld it here we go now we're good and um insert an edge loop this way and i want it to be right in the middle so i'm just going to go and do it this way right here uh there and then i guess this is this will work okay and then i'm going to split this part right here and uh let's go ahead and uh add a little bit of a q grid to this so we know what we're getting and that's giving me kind of a hexagonal thing here so let's uh do this trick and pull this out like so and then let's add another one of these guys and do that same trick and pull that in so this is kind of creating an area for a lens but it kind of has an interesting shape to it let's go ahead and take a look at it this way now sometimes i do this uh, like that but maybe it might be better if i just insert a piece there so i'm just going to leave this be but I kind of want this to be right there. And then I'm going to go to my uh, brushes. So again, these brushes are, you can download from my Gumroad. Um, let's bring it up over here. And by the way, I have a, a new way of doing this. I created a macro uh, in my custom menu called um, Insert Polymesh 3D, which basically just does this, inserts a Polymesh 3D and goes to my brush. So now I can just go to W and hit this button right here and that will change it into a cylinder. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw what happened, but basically just inserted a Polymesh 3D and then loaded my brush. Uh, and this brush you can download for free. Uh, let me kind of do a quick uh, link to that as well. I'm noticing more and more people downloading it, which is great. Um, makes me feel good about uh, putting it out there so if you go to kermico.com here's my gumroad so it's not part of this because uh, the tool I'm using doesn't have a gumroad logo uh, at least not yet maybe soon but if you click on gumroad you go to my gumroad over here and uh, I've got these two brushes so I've got one that's free uh, which pretty much has everything in here it says 17 but I think there's more than uh, yeah there's 17 in here it was 15 now it's 17 and then if you want to buy the pro version, it's $2.50, uh, pretty inexpensive. And it just has some extra pieces. Uh, we'll use some of these in the mech, but if you don't need those extra pieces, you don't need to buy this. You can just use the free version. Uh, by the way, if you guys like my colors too, uh, on my UI, you can download that for free as well. So those again are on my Gumroad. So go to kermico.com and Gumroad and you'll find them there um, like that. Okay, so here, uh, maybe I want I don't want this one. Maybe I want one of these guys. I want one of these pipes. Let's choose the pipe, bring it over to where we want it. And again, these primitives are great because they basically are just uh, a good place to start when you're working on stuff. And uh, like for example, right here, and I do have the edges creased by the way. So when you hit D, this becomes a nice perfect cylinder for you uh, with a hole in it. Of course, you can generate these in ZBrush as well. But uh, since I use these all the time, I just kind of want a faster, simpler way of doing it. Uh, well, I don't know if this is going to help it being over there, but let's put it over here. And move it so it's where we want it to be. So like I said, I could have just grown it out of the shape there, but it, it might be cooler to just have this thing have its own uh, color scheme. Uh, and and whatnot so we'll just kind of do that with it let's turn on dynamic subdiv let's go to z modeler and uh, what i want to do here is q mesh a poly loop so i'm going to do that like that so that creates this type of thing here and let's insert some edges uh, that side and this side i think that's not what i want i just want to go to interactive not interactive but single edge loop and just kind of get a little bit of a bevel here on that. And if I want to bevel on this edge right here, I can very easily go to crease. Since it's creased, it's easy enough to do. Just go to geometry, uh, crease, and bevel. Just adjust the bevel width to something that 
I want. So that kind of softens up those edges, which makes it look cooler. And then since this is an optical thing, I probably want to Q-mesh this poly loop as well out a bit like that. And um, hmm, let me go in as well. <laughs> Wants to do an edge action when I need to do poly. Here we go. And just have it do this. So that kind of looks more like a camera. And then I can just maybe um, inside have more of a lens. that so yeah as you can see here very quickly I can generate a neat looking lens like object and then I want to crease this edge loop right so I just go over here um, crease and I can crease it another thing also is if I look at this thing as a solo object so I look at it this way if I want to crease all the edges that are um, here there's a quick way of doing it too which is crease PG uh, which basically creases all the polygroups and I get everything to be sharp like this. Which, uh, you know, I think that might be cool. Let's go ahead and bring everything back up and let's see if this looks better. I think that looks better sharp than it does unsharp. This looks too soft, so let's pre uh, crease PG. And since we did that, we can also add a bevel to that just by uh, doing this, using this bevel slider and getting maybe a little bit more of a bevel so it's not too harsh of a sh of an edge all right so that looks good and that's kind of that optical part over there um, this looks like an old tv camera <laughs> this whole thing up here and now let's just add some more visual interest to it uh, let's go back to this and turn on polyframe and maybe insert an edge loop right here so as now I can start inserting edge loops over here and then maybe um, go to QMesh, single polygon, and QMesh, not poly loop, but a single poly, like that. Turn on dynamic subdiv on this guy. Let's make sure we have Q grid of, let's say, about one. And a convergence of just about, or coverage about there. All right, let's look at this. Okay, that actually made it so that this needs to be a little bit smaller. Okay, so I can either resize the whole thing or I can just make this thinner. So uh, to make this thinner, I can do this. Um, or I can just resize the whole thing. I kind of like the proportions, so I'm just going to resize the whole thing. All right, there's that. Now I can also make a copy of this and make an indentation. Um, on it. So let me do that. So I'm just going to make a copy, resize it, and put it inside like that. So there is something kind of connecting it. And it's the same whole thing. Uh, it's not that, that much geometry, so I'm not really going to care about it. And this could also be a different material or color. So that's there. And then um, let's go back to this guy right here. And let's see if I can slide these in a bit. No, that's not looking too good. No, I'm going to answer an edge loop this way. All right, let's see. Do, do we have any questions? Um, OK, so a uh, good question. Let's see, how much time do we have? We have about 10 minutes. I'll, I'll talk about that because that's a good one. Uh, so the you're talking about the, the um, and we can maybe make some parts for this too. So we kind of can uh, utilize that for what we're working on. Now let me do one more thing here before we do that. Uh, do this. OK, that looks good. And then maybe do this. I uh, don't like that too much. Let's see. We add an edge loop and then just do this top part. Or just the bottom part. Yeah, that looks better. Right, and... Okay. So, um, all right. So let's say I want to create some other pieces to put in here, right? So uh, 
this is kind of my workflow for that. Um, so go into Spotlight and uh, let's see where, let's say I'm going to add some handle type of thing here. Or I can uh, use some of these grill parts here too. So maybe we'll do the grill. Let's say I want to do the grill. I want to do this grill right here, the, the ones that we did, but I want to do the new one. Uh, so let me just go to that subtool and hide it. I should just leave it there for now because that's the thickness I want. Okay, and then let's bring out Spotlight. Let's resize all these guys. And suppose I want to use, maybe I want to use, let's see, this one. So see, I already have some of these things pre-made, so we can just use those. So let's say I want to use, um, this one was kind of the ones we liked, but it didn't have as much distance. So I'm going to use this one. Here's an interesting one right here. Make sure I select it. Okay, there it is. Resize it. Okay, and create the um, Polymesh 3D. There it is. And let's hide all the stuff. Okay, so there's that, okay? And suppose I wanna move that into here, and that's going to be how my grill is going to be. I'm saying it's a grill, but I don't, I don't know what it is. Probably like some sort of, I don't know the exact military term for it. Okay, so let's do this first, and move this to the center, move it up, and move it to where it's supposed to go. Okay, so now this thing, I'm gonna subtract it, hide the previous one. Let's turn on Live Boolean to see what this is going to look like. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice here. Right, so there's that. Turn Polyframe off. And uh, actually, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so it shows up like that. trying to figure out a good placement for it. Maybe, you know, place it over here like that, okay? And then we like it, so I can just make a copy of it and align this one this way. And I'm just basically aligning these. It doesn't really matter. I can delete one of the ones that's an overlap later on. Or what I can also do is if I want to overlap them, Right, what I can do is I can just select this one. Oops, there's a little bit more to it than that. Okay, select that and then uh, delete the hidden parts. And then duplicate this, like so. Maybe one last time. to here. Okay, so now I've got these parts that I created, right? And let me just go back to here. And so this last one I don't need. I know there's some questions coming in. I will answer them as soon as possible. Let me just kind of finish doing this first. I don't know why it's not picking this up. Come on, pick it up. Okay, and then insert and then invert that. Uh, okay, hang on. I guess the best way to do this is to do select lasso and just select it this way, get rid of it, delete hidden. Okay, so now we've got this piece, right? And if I look at this piece, if I look at the geometry of it, okay, you can see here that it, it does have good topology, pretty decent topology actually. Um, right, but the edges kind of seem funky, right? So I want to give this a little bit better topology than what it has. Um, one way of doing it is to, you know, if it's just the one piece, you can isolate it and do it. And let's do that here. I'm just going to isolate this one piece right here and um, split hidden. Okay, and then just go back to here. Right, and then let's see, this has what I need, but I'm just going to work with this one piece right here. OK, 
Okay, so I want to do this piece with better topology. Right now it's got decent topology, but it's got some triangles at the end, uh, so it won't work. So one way to fix this one, since this one's a circle, I mean, you know, this sort of works with a lot of other ones too. Here's a quick trick to kind of get better edges, and that's you go in here to this uh, to the side of it, and you um, Q mesh poly loop, right? So you basically add a ring around this. Oops, not that. But it's going to be tough to do. Let me just turn the uh, edge action off, right? So I just want to go this way, and so that adds that edge around this way, right? So right now I have much better topology on the on the on the edges, right? So um, that works out. So that's one way of doing it is just kind of add a a poly loop around the outside part, right? And then that basically gives you better topology. And the inside part doesn't really matter. And if it does matter and you really do want to fix it, what you can do is you can zero mesh it. So here, what you can do is you can just um, go to geometry, zero mesher, and say keep groups, right? And then um, make sure you've got symmetry on. So I'm gonna have X symmetry and Y symmetry on, and just zero mesh this. Uh, does it, oh, does it have subdivisions? No, it does not. So why is it not zero meshing it? Um, does not contain polygons on the symmetrical. Okay, so let's just kind of turn Y off and I'll just choose X to zero mesh it. And let's, oh, maybe I should do local here. That's what it's asking me for. Okay, let's try that. Let's turn Y back on. Let's zero mesh it. Okay, so now you can see that it basically created a kind of a better topologized version of it. Wow, created a whole bunch. I don't know why. I don't know what happened here, but it's cool. All right, so that's one way of doing it. And you can uh, zero mesh things individually, but I, I use another workflow and I'll show that as well. And it's probably gonna be better with another type of a piece. So uh, let's go back here to Lightbox and let's pick, um, what's a good one? Uh, maybe not from this list, but the another one of these guys. So let's bring Lightbox back. Let's choose one of these guys right here, right? And let's say I want to do um, what's a good one to do? Which one is a good one to do? Let's say I want to do um, let's do this one right here. It's a it's it's a well or this one, either one. Let's go with this one. So I'm going to bring this one over and let's snapshot 3D it. Okay, and uh, and there it is. So let's hide all this stuff. Now, if I look at the topology again, I basically get this, right? It's a lot of geometry, right? And it's a lot of edge loops and I want to simplify this. So here's what I do. First things first is I get rid of uh, the whole thing except this edge, right? So I just basically kept this face and then the rest I'm just going to go delete hidden. Okay, so now I'm just left with this piece right here. And again, it's got good topology. It's all squares. Sculpting on this would be nice, but it's got some triangles in the end and I don't want those triangles. Okay, so again, I can do that same trick with the extrude. So Q1, uh, I'm just using, Q is my hotkey for um, this menu and also is my hotkey for um, basically selecting uh, a brush. So one is my brush for um, for the edges, right? So I can go in here and this is going to be a little bit tricky. This is one way of doing it. And I can just go to edge and do extrude and do mesh border and just do this, which is kind of similar to what I did before. turn Q mesh off here. And so what that does is basically gives me this lip, just kind of like I did before. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is also zero meshing. So I didn't add that lip, is I'm just going to zero mesh this, right? So I'm just going to make sure I've got my symmetry on for X. 
and then just go to geometry and a zero mesh that. Okay, so that's gonna churn for a while and give me a better topology for this piece. Um, all right, so it aborted the remesh. I don't know why it did that. Let's go back to just the state here. I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm gonna go ahead and with the zero mesh here, I'm gonna say go to half. I just want it to give me the limited amount uh, on the major. Okay, let's just turn symmetry off for now. Uh, and uh, turn as long as symmetry on it is. All right, I don't know, uh, let's do this thing to it. Let's move this to the center. This will work better over here. All right, so now um, what I'm going to do is just zero mesh it like that. And I'm going to get, okay, I don't know. I think the delete hidden didn't actually happen on this is what's going on. All right, so let's delete the hidden part. Okay, that's what was going on. All right, now we're good. And now let's just zero mesh it again. All right, and now it's going to give me a much better topology version uh, of what I had. Uh, I don't know why it's not liking the symmetry and I just want to make sure delete hidden. Okay, so there's nothing hidden. Just zero mesh it then. So it gives me this, right? Which is okay, but I think I can do better. Um, so I am going to actually go to activate symmetry in X. I'm gonna turn local symmetry off for now and I'm just gonna zero mesh it this way. Let's see what we get. Does not contain polygon on the major symmetrical edge. Okay, let's turn it on local again, local symmetry, zero mesh it. And I think we're gonna get what we want now. No, all right, so I think there might be something somewhere else. I'm just gonna do this, delete hidden. All right, so nothing's hidden. I don't know why this is not doing it, maybe. Let's do this one more time. I'm gonna bring it to home and I'm gonna center this. And let's turn actor symmetry X. Oh, that's why, because I'm not facing the X direction, that's why. <laughs> Uh, troubleshooting is, is kind of some of the fun of this, is figuring out why things are not working. Okay, we're good now. 100% good, activate symmetry, zero mesh, and that gives me much better, and I can continue to do this. Okay, and it's still giving me good topology, and it's giving me that shape. So the topology inside is pretty good. I can do it maybe one more time. I can continue to do this until I get gradations on the side, but right now I'm good. I can probably go even further. All right, so now I can kind of see that there's some jaggies. So let's, if I do uh, dynamic, it's okay, but I think the one before is gonna give me a better result. So there's that. Okay, so now that I've got this, okay, and I like it, I can just go in here and go into dynamic subdiv. Turn that on, turn smooth, you know, I can leave smooth there, it doesn't matter, but I can add it some thickness to it, like so. So now I've got, I mean, that's way too much thickness, right? So I can just, uh, let me bring up the menu so you guys can see what I'm doing. Dynamic subdiv, and then I can just choose a thickness that works well. Okay, and if I don't want those smooth subdivision levels, I can turn that, those off. Okay, and then let me increase this a little bit more. Okay, so now I like this thickness, I can just say apply, and that basically creates this for me. And then to add subdivisions in this direction, if I wanna sculpt on this or do damage or whatever on it, uh, what I do is uh, go to uh, my edge here and go to insert uh, multiple edge loops, and I want interactive, so I can just click here and then just move my mouse to insert as many edge loops this way as I want, so that's good. And now if I just polyframe it all, now I've got a perfectly, uh, perfect topology for that piece. Um, so yeah, now I can add edge loops, borders or whatever, I can remove borders and do all sorts of stuff. So in here in the middle, for example, if I want to remove some of these supporting edges, I can, right? So I can just go to edge, insert, and just with alt key, just delete some of these edges if I want to reduce some of that poly count. 
right? So now I've got less poly count this way. Uh, and I can continue to go down until I get to this knot. What do I have for it? Point. Uh, okay, for edge. Do nothing. Okay. All right, so now I've got that exact same shape, but I don't have all those edge loops in the middle. I might want to just add one in the middle just for kicks as a supporting edge, but I can get rid of all those other ones and maintain the exact same shape. I can't get rid of any of the ones on the inside because they basically go to the outside edges, right? And if I like this, I can of course mirror it over. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, how can you activate this thing up here? Is that what you're asking? Uh, just a Sierra, El Justice Sierra. Um, if that's what you're asking, how you get this thing? Okay, so this is, they added in a newer version of ZBrush. So if you don't have it, it you might it might be that uh, you have an older version of ZBrush. So make sure you're on the most current version, which is two thousand twenty one point six point two. And the way you can add it, I think it's called I forget what it's called. Is it called? Um, where is it? It's in here. It's in preferences and it's not, uh, it's, uh, where are you? Um, cam view. Yeah, it's cam view. So this is it right here, right? So if you go to preferences, if this is not on, uh, right, that turns it on. And also you can choose different things too. You can choose, you know, the dog, um, right? Or, um, even Earthquake, you can choose Earthquake as well. Famous Earthquake over here. Um, somebody should mint that. Somebody should mint Earthquake. That would be hysterical. Right. Um, you can have a skeleton, skull. You can have something that says names. There's a bunch of these. I personally like this one, but yeah, you can turn them on and off as you, you want. All right, so uh, we are a little bit over time. Uh, that kind of is our, um... oh, you know what? I promised to take this into Keyshot. Let me do that first. All right, so if I want to launch this into Keyshot, all I need to do is uh, I'm going to turn line Boolean off. Now these things over here, they're not going to show up Booleaned. I mean, I can create the Boolean object or whatnot, but we're running out of time, so we can do that later. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this thing into uh, into Keyshot like this, right? So it's just again one button press and then click BPR, and that'll load it into Keyshot. So let's just load this thing into Keyshot for a minute. Uh, look, see what it looks like, and then we'll end the um, we'll end the um, the stream there. So before I end it, I just want to also uh, remind everybody to uh, if you watch this and you liked it. Make sure to like the video. It makes a big difference for us uh, if you do. Uh, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this. Uh, always welcome to leave a comment if you like it, if there's anything else you want us to add. Uh, and if you have questions that you didn't get to ask during this, um, you can leave the question in the comment. And uh, folks from PixLogic sometimes look at these things and they can uh, respond to you uh, in that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back here. Keyshot is loading. And what I really like about using Keyshot with ZBrush is that uh, there's that one button press, which is uh, just this button right here, uh, Keyshot on, which is under render right here, um, external renders and Keyshot, and I have it on my UI. And then you just hit BPR and it sends it over to Keyshot. And here it is in Keyshot. Um, it's having some issues with some things, but that's okay. And then I got to do this thing in Keyshot, which is a bit annoying, but uh, nevertheless uh, makes it work better. So now I basically can just look at this thing here in Keyshot and I can start assigning materials to it. So here, let's assign uh, kind of this to the here, this to here. Uh, let's see if I have some black aluminum. I do add it to this part. So right here, I'm just basically, and let me do one more thing here to in Keyshot, which makes it look a little bit better, is let me change my rotation 80 degrees, 
like so. Okay, and so now I can just go in here and let's just choose some galvanized metals. Um, let's go ahead and go with anodized and maybe choose this one there. Uh, no, I don't want to link them. So you can see here, I can very quickly kind of make a really nice looking, um, and notice that even uh, some of the key shot materials have the edge kind of uh, wear and tear, so you can kind of see a little bit of that on the barrel. But yeah, I can just kind of, you know, eventually we'll be doing this. Some of these things I will, uh, some of these parts I will create UVs for, and we'll do that as well in the, in the stream. And some of them I might just, you know, I can just assign materials to uh, like that. So you just kind of continue and just add materials to all these different parts. Um, so like kind of a shiny one over here. Let's see how what this looks like for these guys. Okay, so you can see here I can very quickly get something uh, pretty compelling. Um, but yeah, so that's the key shot part. And uh, thank you all for uh, for watching this. And um, Again, uh, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, it helps us out. And also, um, if you have questions, uh, it's always good to tune in live. I will be on uh, not next Friday, but the Friday after, and uh, the, not the Friday after that, but the you know, so one Friday on, fr one Friday off. Uh, and so um, you can tune in live. And Potato Man, uh, bummer you missed it, but again, you can go in and watch it after the fact. And uh, yep. So, um, you know, a good thing is make sure you, um, when you are on here, um, if you go to ZBrush Live, you can look at the schedule, uh, right? So they do have a schedule, I think. Uh, you can look at the schedule so that you don't miss it next time. So go to the calendar here, and the calendar has all the different things that are coming up, and the time, and, and you can, I think, I don't know if they have a facility to add it to your calendar, that would be nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can see, I, I, I don't think they've put it in yet, but I will be on as well. All right, so with that, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And um, I will see you guys in a couple of weeks if you tune back in. And if you don't, maybe subsequently in the future sometime. Uh, happy ZBrushing, everybody, and bye-bye.